Baton Rouge police released video showing fatal shooting of Alton Sterling, planned to fire one officer. Police in Baton Rouge announced Friday night that they will fire officer Blaine Salamini for violating department policies during the fatal shooting of Alton Sterling in July 2016. The announcement came three days after state prosecutors announced that Salamini and officer Howie Lake would not face criminal charges in the shooting, which came at a time of intense national scrutiny of police use of force and prompted massive local protests. Lake. The department's announced Friday, will be suspended for three days. Police Chief Murphy Paul said in a news conference Friday that Salamini had violated the department's training and organizational standards. Earlier this week, Salamone's attorney told the Washington Post that the officer was expecting to be fired and was preparing an appeal. Our police officers are held to a higher standard, Paul said. Fear cannot be a driver for officers. As it announced Salamone's firing, the department also released new, graphic videos of the confrontation that led to Sterling's death captured by the body camera Salamini was wearing. While the department had initially reported that the officer's camera had fallen off and had not captured relevant video, one of the video clips released Friday shows Salamini arriving on the scene and immediately shouting profanities at Sterling and threatening to shoot him in the head. What I did, sir? Sterling responds at one point. Don't move or he'll shoot your thing ass, bh. Salamini replies. Put your thing hands on the car or I'm going to shoot your thing head. Sterling replies alright and tells officers that they are hurting his arm. The officers proceed to shock Sterling with a stun gun and tackle him before ultimately shooting him. The release of the videos and announcement about the officers comes three days after Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry said the state would not pursue criminal charges against either officer. His decision which followed the Justice Department's announcement last year that it would not seek federal civil rights charges, drew criticism from activists and advocates. Sterling's death in July 2016 was captured in bystander video footage that set off national outrage. In that recording, Sterling could be seen on the ground with two officers on top of him. One of them appeared to yell has got a gun, before shots rang out. According to Landry's office, Sterling was shot six times three times in the chest and three times in his back. An autopsy deemed his death a homicide caused by multiple gunshot wounds. Sterling was among 963 people fatally shot by police in 2016, according to the Post's database tracking such incidents. His death, and the fatal shooting of Philando Castile, a Minnesota school cafeteria worker killed during a traffic stop, prompted protests in Baton Rouge and beyond. Those two incidents preceded ambush attacks that targeted police officers five slain in Dallas after Castile's death followed by three killed in Baton Rouge at a moment of high racial tension nationwide. While bystander video helped draw widespread attention to Sterling's death, it was not the only recording of what happened. Attorneys for Sterling's family had said last year that they were told by federal investigators that Salamini had told Sterling, I'm going to kill you, when he first drew his gun, a detail apparently drawn from the then unreleased recording of the encounter. Landry said his office could begin investigating Sterling's death only after the Justice Department decided not to seek federal charges. In explaining his decision Tuesday, Landry said the officers were attempting a lawful arrest under probable cause, assuming that Sterling was armed while resisting their attempts to arrest him. Lake found a loaded .38 caliber handgun in Sterling's right front pocket after the shooting, Landry's office said. Landry also said this week the toxicology reports showed Sterling had drugs in his system when he was killed, and the Attorney General said it was reasonable that Mr. Sterling was under the influence, and that contributed to his non-compliance. The report Landry's office released Tuesday elaborating on his decision not to seek criminal charges mentioned video recordings that came from multiple other sources, including security footage from the Triple S store, along with the officer's body cameras and police unit cameras, and the enhanced videos generated by the United States Department of Justice. Video footage was repeatedly cited by state and federal authorities in explaining their decisions not to pursue charges in the case. The Justice Department, in announcing the end of the civil rights probe into Sterling's death last year, said it examined footage from inside and outside the store, cell phone videos in the police recordings, and Landry's office said it received extensive video evidence from federal officials. Multiple videos captured portions of the entirety of the officer's interaction with Sterling, the Justice Department said last year. These include cell phone videos, surveillance video from the store, and video from the officer's body cameras in a police vehicle. FBI video forensic experts also provided enhancements of relevant videos for the portion of the struggle that immediately preceded the shooting. The report from Landry's office repeatedly describes movements that appear to have been viewed on video recordings. 
The report also mentions physical actions seen on camera, stating, Video evidence clearly shows Officer Salamone making several attempts to gain control of Sterling's right hand. The Justice Department, in its announcement last year, mentioned video footage that showed Sterling encountering the officers, and at one point noted that the location of Sterling's right hand was not visible to the cameras. At that time, the announcement said, Salamone yelled that Sterling was going for the gun and began to fire at him. Everyone needs to protest in the right way, with peace, no violence, none whatsoever. Thank y'all.